Why are so many people buying a Dacia Spring? It's only been on sale for two years, yet Dacia have managed to sell 120,000 in that time. However, is it a bad thing that so many people want to buy a supposedly poverty spec car? Let's find out. Right, let's get underway. I'm actually in a car park at Charles de Gaulle Airport and I'm heading what looks like the wrong way. <laughs> Good start. To a location just outside the very, very center of Barris to go and do a video of the new Renault 5 electric car. Now make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get to see that video as soon as it's uploaded. I'm just gonna find somewhere to turn around and I can go the right way. Let's try this again. I do quite like the gear selector. That's handy. Away we go. The correct way this time. Duh. One of the biggest problems with the Dacia Spring is its range. The reason it's so cheap is because it doesn't have a very big battery. So you've got a 25 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. That gives you a range of up to 143 miles in the entry level essential 45 and 137 miles in the extreme model. Now I've got the details of some of its competitors. A Volkswagen E-Up, that has a usable battery capacity of 32 kilowatt hours, good for a range of 160 miles. A Nissan Leaf has a battery capacity of 39 kilowatt hours. It's a range of 168 miles. A Vauxhall Corsary, 48 kilowatt hour battery pack and 246 miles. A Peugeot E208, 48 kilowatt hour battery pack, 232 miles. A Renault Zoe, obviously Renault owns Dacia. That has a battery capacity of 52 kilowatt hours and a claimed range of 239 miles. Not ideal. However, the Dacia is supposed to be quite efficient in its use of its energy. It's supposed to be able to do 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour. What will it really do? I'm going to find out, right? So we have 82% of battery remaining. The odometer says 6,080 kilometers. I'm going to go for a drive and see how much battery I have left when I get to my destination. What will the true efficiency be? Let's be brutally honest, this car feels very cheap here on the inside. First off, the steering wheel. It's so rough that you can actually exfoliate your hands as you're driving along. It's managed to get rid of my calluses. Also, there's just bits missing that you find on normal cars. Where is the vanity mirror for the driver and the light? There's the one for the passenger? Oh no, just a big airbag warning sticker. And listen to this, the noise that makes when you put that back up. There's not much soundproofing in here. And the metal on the car just seems so thin and flimsy. Listen to the door shut. <laughs> in fact, the whole car wobbles when you do that as well. We're also missing some key things. Where, where, where's the cup holders? There's no cup holders. There's a distinct lack of money gone into the development. For instance, if someone had spent time developing and testing this car, there's no way they'd have put the USB input up here because look, when you have your cable, you wanna plug your phone in, this happens. Look, it's, it's, uh, mm. Material quality throughout is very, very scratchy. Also, there's absolutely no damping. <laughs> on the glove box. What's more, you can't adjust the steering wheel at all. That's frustrating. Then there's the seats. This is the top of the range version with fake leather, though it just feels more like plastic. Reminds me of the seats in my mum's old mini. Yes, this feels like a cheap car. And then when you jump into the back seats, you notice that there really isn't anything besides the seats here. No door bins, no armrest. In fact, the seats don't even appear to split, they're just a single bench, look. Yeah. While we're at it, let's just test some more door shuts, so come on. Listen to it from the outside. But this is the worst bit. Listen to this. <laughs> look at it, look at it shake. <laughs> yes, it is a bit poverty, isn't it, this car? Or maybe it's just cheap and cheerful. The Dacia Spring has pretty poor performance. The entry level car has just 45 horsepower and takes 19 seconds to get from 0 to 60 miles an hour. This model, the rain shopping version, is called the Extreme. 
but the performance is anything but. It's only got 65 horsepower and takes 13.7 seconds to get to 60 miles an hour. Now I'm gonna show you just how poor the performance is when you're cruising along on the motorway. I'm doing 80 kilometers an hour. I'm gonna floor it to get up to the speed limit, which is 110. Let's see how long that takes. 80, flooring it now. Come on, it's 90. That's 100. That's 110 right there. Not terrible, not totally terrible, but it's definitely the slowest accelerating electric car I've ever driven. The Dacia Spring gets a little bit out of shape when you drive it quickly through some corners. Leans quite a lot in the bends. Now I could show you that actually happening out on the road, but I don't need to. I can give you a demonstration as to what it's like. Look. <laughs> Look at that. It's soft and squidgy and all over the place. This car isn't particularly good at higher speed or longer journeys. Not that you can go all that far because of the range. Basically, it lacks any form of refinement. You can pretty much hear all the vehicles around you, such as that motorbike that just went past. There's quite a bit of wind noise, something that you really notice on electric cars because there's no internal combustion engine whirring away. And there's like an echo from the rear tires just reverberating around the uninsulated boot. This could get very tiring. So too could the seats. So there's literally no lateral support, so you flop about in them. And I don't know what it is. It's like they've been designed, like the seats that you get at airports or at bus stations, where they're kind of designed to actually get you to move on rather than stay and rest for a long period of time. Oh, and then there's a suspension. Whenever you go over an expansion joint or a little bit of a bump at speed, you get a big bounce and the car sort of carries on bouncing because it's as though they haven't fitted it with any dampers. The cost savings are definitely evident at higher speeds. So too is the car's lack of stability. It only weighs just over a tonne, which is quite good for an electric car, but then that's because it hasn't really got a very big battery and it's made out of tin foil. As a result, it does get blown about a bit in the wind. So you find yourself just like constantly correcting and getting a bit nervous when you go past big lorries because they can just push you aside with their draft. It feels cheap. Buying a new or used car? Then you need to visit CarWow and we'll help you find your perfect car at a price you'll love. Just answer a few simple questions about the car you want and our trusted dealers will come back to you with great offers. Then choose the offer that's right for you and contact the dealer directly through CarWow. No haggling, no fees, and on average, CarWow users save over 1,800 pounds. But what if you're not sure which car you actually want? No problem. Just watch our insightful video reviews read our impartial expert advice, or use our helpful car buying tools to discover your ideal car in no time at all. No wonder 95% of customers surveyed said they wouldn't buy a car without CarWow. I've put a link in the description of this video and the pinned comment to take you directly to CarWow so you can see for yourself how it can help you, or you can just click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing up there right now. Alternatively, just Google help me CarWow and my team and I will help you choose your perfect car and get it for a price you'll love. Now on with the video. Thing is though, all those negatives I've just mentioned aren't enough to put off the 30,000 people in France that have bought a Dacia Spring. There's plenty to like about this car, but the key thing is the price. You see, a lot of people get worked up about the price of electric cars. However, I'm quite relaxed about how much this Dacia Spring costs. It starts from just £16,000 for the entry-level version, whereas this range-topping model is £17,000. Now, to put that into context, a Fiat 500e costs £26,000 and a Renault Zoe is £30,000. The spring is super easy to drive around town. I mean, it's perfect for places like Paris. Visibility is good, decent view at the windscreen, decent windows, decent sized door mirrors, decent view at the back as well. Another thing is the suspension is all soft and squidgy, so it's okay over speed humps, over manhole covers, over holes like that in the ground. Like that. There we go. And one of the great things about it, being an electric car, it has a very good turning circle. It's just 9.5 meters. The only other car that you can buy right now, which I think has a better turning circle, is a Citroen Ami. <coughs> Wanna see it in action? Here we go. I'm not supposed to turn around here, but I don't care because I'm a Brit abroad. Wait a minute, I'm not so sure about that. What a strange noise. And the steering. At least the steering itself is nice and light. It's so very light. I think I'm annoying a scooter rider. He's gesturing me to get out of his way. Here he is, he's probably gonna hit the car. 
Hello, hiya, you are right. Sorry, British, therefore an idiot. And you know what? If I'm being perfectly honest, this car has all the kit you really actually need. Well, apart from the uh, aforementioned vanity mirrors. I've got an infotainment screen there and it's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And yeah, I know I moaned about this cable, but you can get something called Android Auto Wireless and it will just, you know, you can stick a little box there and then you can connect your phone wirelessly. I've got air conditioning, great. I've also got cruise control. I have a reversing camera and all round electric windows. I'd say I'm good. Considering this car is just 3.7 meters long, there's actually an all right amount of space here in the back. Headroom, yeah, it's all right. You might think knee room, oh, that's terrible. But it's not as bad as you think because this car's cheapness actually pays off here in the back. Because look, as this is quite flimsy, I can jab my knees like that into the back so people with really long legs will be able to get away with that. Also, unlike in some other electric cars, the seats are quite high from the floor so you don't feel like your knees are up around your ears. And the seat base is quite deep so there's plenty of under thigh support and the front seats are raised up slightly so you can put your feet underneath the seat in front to stretch out a bit more. For a small and very inexpensive car, the Dacia Spring is surprisingly practical. The boot capacity is 290 litres. By comparison, a Vauxhall Corsa E's boot capacity is 267 litres and that car costs almost twice the price of this. Another great thing about the Dacia Spring is that because it's so cheap, I don't really care so much if it gets damaged. It's not expensive to fix. In fact, I wouldn't bother repairing it. Pretty suits it, some dents in it. It's very French. A dented car, look like a dented van. That's so French. No offence, French people, but you don't really give a shit about the condition of your cars. The Dacia Spring holds its value really well, especially for an electric car. After one year, it will only have fallen in value by 20%. So if you pay 16 grand for one, it's gonna be worth about 12,000 pounds. That's about twice the price of my watch. Seems amazing value. To put it into context, a Renault Zoe costs new from around 30,000 pounds, but will only be worth about 15,000 pounds after one year. That's 50% depreciation. This spring is very, very tempting. Okay, so I've arrived at my destination. Let's see exactly how much energy I've used for how far I've gone. So the odometer is reading 6,108 kilometers. So I've done 28 kilometers and the remaining battery is 68%. So I've used 14% of the battery. So when I do the maths based on this being a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack, that should give me a range in the real world of 200 kilometers. Convert to miles, that's 125 miles on a full charge. And this particular version of the spring is supposed to do 137. So it's getting close to claimed. It's just that claimed isn't all that much. And when it comes to charging, it's not great either because it's quite slow fast charging maximum is 34 kilowatts on ac the maximum it will do is seven kilowatts that's the trouble with small batteries you can't charge them that quickly but that does bring me on to my overall verdict for the dacia spring you see while there's plenty to like about it there's also plenty to not like about it and if i'm being brutally honest i would rather have a one-year-old renault zoe than a brand new Dacia Spring. Oh well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree with my verdict in the comments below. Click on the video windows for some more videos and on the car wow box for a special surprise. Thanks for watching.